fellow Falcoholics, what is up? Welcome to another Falcons Film Review here on the Falcoholic Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Knight at Falcoholic Kevin, as always, here to bring you some of the key plays, most impactful plays, most interesting plays from the previous week's game. This one was a very interesting one, a uh, very exciting one for Falcons fans as the Falcons took down the 49ers 28-14 to uh, in a game where they were as big as six point, maybe six and a half point underdogs at one point during the week, despite being at home. Um, and the Falcons outside of some, some second quarter, uh, slips a little bit, uh, more or less dominated this game, uh, on the scoreboard, especially. And they did it in the way that they've done, uh, for many of the previous weeks uh they've not necessarily gained a lot of yards they've not necessarily run a lot of plays but the plays that they run count uh and they've been dominant at running the ball and sort of suffocating the life out of their opponents in combination with some key defensive plays here and there from a defense that no one's going to confuse with a good defense but is good enough for this team to be able to play the, the brand of football that they want and come away with some W's here, the Falcons at three and three, uh, which is better, I think, than anyone would have predicted at this point uh, going into the year, and they're doing it uh, very differently than they they did last year. To be to be certain, uh, a good game here against the 49ers. We're going to spend most of today's show uh, on the offense. Uh, just the defense, I think, had a good game, um, but I think the offense. There were just more plays that that were interesting. The defense had a lot of plays that were similar, and they're definitely going to deserve some shout-outs, especially for the interception and that really key stop at the end of the game. Um, But the offense, there was a lot of cool stuff to look at, and once again, sort of seeing this uh, this offense continue to evolve and become extremely run-heavy. The Falcons ran 40 run plays as opposed to just 14 pass plays, by far the most skewed. Uh, number we've seen this season for them and that that officially put the Falcons into number one in terms of the most run heavy offense in the NFL Uh, they overtook the Bears so this team has has clearly shifted under Marcus Mariota to a 100% run first uh, rushing focused attack the play action passing game and this game was excellent Uh, 13 of 14 Marcus Mariota completed almost all of his passes. Didn't have an incompletion, I think, until late in the game. Um, wasn't, you know, lighting up the scoreboard. Only 121 yards through the air, but two touchdown passes. They were efficient throwing the ball. Uh, and when you're running for almost 170 yards and you're up multiple scores, you don't necessarily need to do a whole lot in the passing game. So I think, uh, you know, I've been one to praise Mariota when he's played well and to. Uh, you know, start, was coming after him for what I thought were weaker performances over the past few games. Uh, today was one of his strongest performances, particularly as a runner. Uh, and we saw what what I think we want to see from Mariota if he's going to remain the starter. Um, and if he continues playing like this, then he will probably remain the starter indefinitely. Um, because this team, you know, just put up 28 points on the number one defense. Injured, yes, but... This is still very impressive. This was the number one run defense, the number one overall defense, a very, very good unit missing some key players, but they had been missing key players for several weeks. Nick Bosa was really the big one that that went out um, for this game compared to the previous weeks. And the Falcons really sort of had their way with the 49ers for much of this game. And and, uh, it's very impressive the way they did it. They did it with a lot of very interesting stuff in the run game, really just smashing the ball down the 49ers throat and taking advantage of Marcus Mariota's mobility and using that against the 49ers. Um, they, and you look at the title of this episode, the Falcons beat the 49ers at their own game in their wins. They've sort of done that. They beat the Browns at their own game. They beat the Seahawks who have been famous for wanting to be a run first team. They're more passing focused under Geno Smith than they would expect it, obviously. But, um, when they've won, they've they've sort of won against teams like the Falcons that want to run the ball and shorten games, and they've just done it better than everyone else. And this was the most impressive version of that yet, going against a team in the 49ers, another you know top six rushing attack with a number one defense behind that rushing attack. Um, 
and the Falcons have no such elite defense to lean on. They do, however, have an elite run game, and that's what we're going to focus a lot of our attention on as well as some of the key pass plays in this game. So let's get right into it, starting with some of these uh, terrific plays on the opening drive for the Falcons. All right, folks, first play we're going to look at here. It is the first quarter. This is the first drive for the Falcons uh, opening drive. This is currently 1341 remaining in the first quarter. The third and two here uh, at the eight, the Atlanta 34 yard line. Uh, crucial situation here for the Falcons facing a third down. They only need two yards to convert and the 49ers know that they're going to play this very aggressively. Um, you're going to see what appears to be, you know, like a single high safety look, but this safety is going to rotate down to pick up Zacchaeus uh, before the ball is snapped. Then we're actually going to see double teams on two of the Falcons' big threats. The 49ers not really that concerned with Zacchaeus, so we're going to see here's uh, Kyle Pitts and Drake London at the top. We're going to see doubles on both of these guys, so London's going to have what appears to be one-on-one, -on -one, but then we're going to see the linebacker go over to cover him up. Kyle Pitts appears to have one-on-one, -on -one, but we're also going to see this linebacker sort of go over to him while Fred Warner keeps his eyes on the backfield, Tyler Algier, Marcus Mariota. Uh, and that's going to leave, of course, Alameda Zacchaeus one-on-one -on -one with the safety who's rotating down uh, while uh, Brian Edwards is down here. He's just going to run a clear out route that we're going to see here. So this is a very good concept for the Falcons here, sort of banking on the 49ers going after their top threats and leaving Zacchaeus one-on-one -on -one where he's feasted this year, as you guys well know. So what we're going to see uh, is just a simple crosser here from Drake London right at the sticks. That's going to occupy two defenders. We're also going to see Kyle Pitts run like a slant and then a come sort of just running towards the sideline here. And that's also going to occupy two defenders. Brian Edwards just going to sort of try to pull a double move and just sort of clear out this defender while Zacchaeus is just going to run this route here. Uh, but he's going to end up with a huge amount of separation from this safety who plays Zacchaeus really far off. And Zacchaeus is just going to catch this pass and take it for a massive gain. So let's, See what happens when the 49ers try to play the sticks here, focus all their attention on Drake London and Kyle Pitts, and leave Zacchaeus one on one with a safety, which is a mismatch, as we will see. You can see the safety rotate down there. There's Zacchaeus, and just the cushion, uh, it's just too much, and Zacchaeus just eats that space up and takes this for a massive gain. Uh, not a whole lot that the defense could do there. Uh, the safety's sort of late getting down there. Zacchaeus already has an enormous amount of space. And with all the attention going to Drake London and, of course, Kyle Pitts, there's just an enormous gulf uh, there and a, basically just an easy throw for Marcus Mariota to make to Zacchaeus, who has just... It's been a specialty of his this year. Uh, just sort of eating up that space, taking advantage of the one-on-ones that he's going to get and making defenses pay for... Treating him as, you know, a lesser option in this receiving game, which, you know, compared to Drake London and Kyle Pitts, I guess you could say that he is. But he's made teams pay so far. He did it again, setting the Falcons up nearly in the red zone uh, on this opening drive. And this would end up being a crucial one for Atlanta in this game. All right, folks, this is the next play we're going to take a look at. First quarter, 851, still the opening drive here. Second and goal with about two yards to go. And this is just another example of the Falcons make, taking advantage of teams expecting them to do certain things. Now, you see this play, you see this formation with all these extra tight, with these two extra tight ends, with Tyler Algier at the two-yard line, second and goal. Yeah, I think it's going to be run. And honestly, the Falcons probably going to run the ball on over 50% of these plays. Uh, but when you have two threats like Kyle Pitts and Drake London, the 49ers have to respect that. But they honestly don't respect it that much because they they have both of those guys singled up, sort of seeing if the Falcons will, will try to test those guys with a throw. Uh, but it's actually going to be neither. Uh, it's not going to be a run. It's not going to be a throw to Kyle Pitts. It's not going to be a throw to Drake London. As you all know, this will be Mike Cole Pruitt's first touchdown catch with the Falcons this year. 
because the entire 49ers defense is going to play the run. Um, and they're really put in a bind here because, of course, it is at the two-yard line. So if you don't play the run right off the snap, it's it's possible that the Falcons just get it if someone messes up. So we're going to see that immediately. Uh, everyone's going to play the run. The safety back here is going to creep inside almost immediately as well as the uh, Fred Warner. He's also going to try to sort of head off this run play, and that's going to leave Michael Pruitt after he slips his block just one-on-one with a, with a, uh, a safety out here. I believe that's Odom, uh, and he's just going to make a great play, not m- get a ton of separation, but just show off those hands. This, you know, you guys forget Michael Pruitt, uh, very heralded receiving tight end coming out of college who's transitioned into more of a blocking role, uh, but he still has great hands. Runs a four five eight. This is a fast tight end. This is a guy that I think can be a mis- mismatch guy, especially because he's going to be used as a blocker like 90% of the time. Uh, but let's just see how this unfolds. Uh, great throw from Mariota right where Michael Pruitt has his hands able to catch it, and he shows off those great hands to make this touchdown happen. So you can already see the 49ers just playing the run relentlessly, and the safety even uh, doesn't respect Michael Pruitt's ability at all. Um Right off the snap, you're going to see the safety here, uh, Odom, I believe, number 30. So you've already seen Fred Warner take a step. You've already seen the other linebacker here take a step. And even the safety who's responsible for the contain on the outside and possibly covering anyone who's out here, he's also taken a step in. So now all Michael Pruitt has to do is sneak through here, and he's going to have an opportunity for an uncontested catch. Now the safety to his credit notices this is happening and does pull out and sort of try to cover this, but it's just too late. He's already given up. uh, He's already given it up, given up the cushion to Pruitt. Who's then got a step on him. And then it's just a nice catch and throw uh, there for Marcus Mariota to Michael Pruitt for the first touchdown of the game. And like I said, the Falcons, it's one thing to be to say that teams have to respect the play action, particularly on the goal line, but it's another thing entirely to be so dangerous running the football that they basically have to play the run because of that threat. And like like we've said before, if you can run the ball well, it's going to open things up in the passing game. Teams are going to have to respect the threat of the run, and it's going to open up opportunities for plays like this in the red zone. And that's, that's something that's really nice. It's going to help this team be more efficient in the red area at the goal line uh, and have more options because teams won't be able to just drop a bunch of guys in coverage and know that they can stuff up the run up the middle like they could in 2021. Uh, so great play there to cap off the, a uh, productive and scoring opening drive for the Falcons. All right, third play we're going to take a look at here. Second quarter, nearing halftime, 334 remaining. Falcons facing third and 12 after the 49ers have tied this game up with two quick touchdown drives, 14 all. Falcons looking to put some points on the board before halftime to get the momentum back because they know they're going to give this ball right back to San Francisco after halftime. Uh, And this is just a really critical play here by Marcus Mariota getting this third and 12 with his legs on a very important scramble, really showing off what it is that he brings to this offense that's unique. Um, you know, we I've, I've criticized his accuracy, criticized his decision-making as a thrower, but what I can't impugn is his ability as a runner. He is really special. Uh, he's really damn fast, and he's really good at avoiding defenders. Uh, we've also seen him make a lot of clutch plays when things go wrong. And look, I mean, those are things that are valuable for an offense. Um, and this was one of his best games at all of those things. So we're going to see the 49ers basically go with almost an all out blitz here. Uh, they're going to send six rushers, including multiple linebackers. Um, so we're going to see this guy coming. We're going to see both, uh, you know, the only one that's not going to come here is actually Fred Warner, who's going to drop back in a zone here, but all these other guys are coming as well. I believe that's Greenlaw there off the edge uh, that's going to come. And Mario is going to have pressure in his face almost immediately. The Falcons, to their credit, I believe, do have a, a blitz beating play called here. Um, you're going to see Pitts, who's just lined up in line. Uh, he's actually going to chip the blitzer. Um, and then run out here where he's going to be pretty open. And I think he would have had a solid chance to get the first down. But as you'll see, Mariota has basically no time with six blitzers coming. I don't think they were expecting that many guys. Um, 
But what he does do is make this defense look silly and make them pay for sending so many guys. Because once he gets past those blitzers, there's only one linebacker left, and that's Fred Warner. And since he's dropped so far back into his own coverage, Mariota has a ton of space to run, and he shows off the wheels on this one. So let's watch this play out. Mariota is back to pass. He gets the snap, and this pressure is on him immediately. Uh, he gets out there, and he just turns on the Jets, gets just uh, past the first down marker, picks up 15 on the run, and you can tell this was designed to go to Pitts, that he actually gets the look he wants, right? There's the chip. But what Pitts doesn't really see is that this guy is going to have basically a free path to Mariota. Um, you know, he's got he's going to have pressure in his face in about two seconds here. Um, but Pitts is getting the chip, and then he's going to go out here, and he's got these two receivers that are sort of going to run routes that are going to clear out the guys. Um, and if you watch Pitts' reaction here a few seconds from now, uh, you'll see that he's he basically starts calling for the ball. He's like, hey, hey, you know, there's nobody here. And, you know, he's right. You know, there, look at this. Nobody here, uh, you know, and he does have this guy who's looking for him, but Pitts one-on-one -on -one with a defender trying to get that first down. You know, you like Pitts' chances there, but Mariota has guys all around him. There's no, I mean, he he's just going to have to float that thing within a, a half a second here, um, and he just doesn't have time to do it. Uh, so he's going to just take off, which is the, the smart decision, because as much space as Kyle Pitts has, Marcus Mariota has more. Uh, and there's where he has to get, and he's fast as hell, and he's going to get it. So, the you know, that's that's the danger of blitzing a quarterback like Mariota. He can make you pay if those guys get behind him and he gets out in front of this blitz. Right about here is when everyone is like, oh, my God, we screwed up, uh, because everyone is now, except for this guy who McGarry has pretty well handled, is now behind Marcus Mariota. He's already starting to run. And you just look at how quickly he's out of there. No one's going to be able to catch him. Um, it's up to the other guys to clean that up, but not before a first down. On again, what will be a pivotal drive here, getting points before the half for the Falcons. All right, folks, here we are for play number four. My favorite run of the game. Uh, we didn't get a ton of huge runs from the Falcons running backs in this one. Mariota actually had most of the big runs. Um, but what we did see was a lot of plays that looked like this up front where they were just the Falcons offensive line and tight ends were just sort of pounding the 49ers. And it wasn't necessarily resulting in huge gains, but it was resulting in four, five, six yards, you know, fairly frequently and really helped them convert a bunch of third and short situations. Um, on this one though, they're going to, they're going to hit what they need to hit. And this is going to be a big run. that's going to set up the Falcons inside the five yard line for a potential touchdown opportunity. And we're going to see some really nice blocking here, uh, from the usual suspects, right? First of all, we're going to see Caleb McGarry, uh, get some nice, uh, momentum out here on the outside zone to go take out the cornerback. Who's got the outside contain. Then we're going to see, Drew Dahlman fly down the field and take out the linebacker. And then we're going to see something we're not maybe used to seeing, which is Kyle Pitts absolutely crushing the edge defender back inside, smashing him in with some help from Chris Lindstrom here, who's going to hit the defensive tackle. And these two are going to smash into each other right there. And that's going to leave a big hole for Caleb Huntley to take this ball through and just punish defenders as he gets closer to the goal line, um, getting some really excellent yards after context. So let's watch this one play out here. You can see those blocks hit and then look at these guys running these offensive linemen out there uh, just hitting those second level blocks and Caleb Huntley wanting to get into the end zone there. He stopped just a couple yards short but really what helps make this play sort of an unsung hero right uh, of the blocking and that's Kyle Pitts. He's just going to pound this edge. He's going to slam him right in there. And with Chris Lindstrom also pushing his guy over, they're going to get tied up. And that's going to give Huntley all the room he needs to get out here while Kayla McGarry just goes and kicks out uh, the corner and just wipes him out of the play. And Drew Dahlman's going to cover so much space and just run this linebacker also completely out of this play. Uh, and then we're just going to see Caleb Huntley, you know, 
break a tackle from a defensive tackle hanging off of him. That's not easy to do. Then he's going to pound into, I believe, the safety here. Oh, no, that's that, that's a linebacker, I think. It's hard to see the numbers. No, no, that is the safety. That's Deshaun Gibson. Um, and just drag Gibson for, like, three more yards until finally the linebacker gets off of Dahlman uh, about 20 yards downfield. Uh, and that is almost pushed into the end zone. But just a really nice, fun run play if you're the Falcons. Not so fun, I'm sure, for the 49ers. Um, just watching... All these blocks, and, and Kyle Pitts, a guy not known for his blocking, obviously, really get in there and deliver that physical block on the edge rusher to, to open up that initial hole. Then you see those two terrific second-level blocks by Kayla McGarry and Drew Dahlman. Um, and then, of course, the spectacular yard, yards after contact from Caleb Huntley that nearly punches this one into the end zone. Fortunately for the Falcons, it won't take them long to get this ball into the end zone, and that'll be the next play we take a look at here. All right, folks, next play we're going to take a look at here. This is late again in the second quarter, uh, 102 remaining. First and goal after that Caleb Huntley run, three yards approximately to go. And we're going to see what this offense does to teams in the red zone right now when things are humming. Um, it It's very difficult to decide, decipher what the Falcons are going to do. And because teams have to respect the run game to, to such a high extent, they're gonna the, we're gonna watch the 49ers here basically sell out to stop this run, and the motion from Atlanta is actually gonna make this even better. Uh, and what this is is a designed run for Marcus Mariota. Um, so we're gonna see Zacchaeus, who's lined up on the outside here. He's gonna motion before the play starts and come over here, and that's gonna actually shift. The way the 49ers play this, the corner here is going to actually come further down to play the run because there's you know no receiver over there other than Parker Hesse, who's eligible. Um, and then number 27 is going to follow Zacchaeus over here. And basically everyone else is playing Caleb Huntley. Uh, we're going to see the play action to Huntley, who's going to go up the middle here. And basically everyone back here is keying on Huntley, going after Huntley. And that's going to leave the cornerback... Uh, who's already crept down and is a little bit more out of position for Marcus Mariota, uh, one-on-one with Marcus Mariota, who is going to make him look silly uh, with his running ability. Uh, the cornerback takes one basically false step, and then it's it's off to the races for Mariota, who's going to take that in for the touchdown. Um, so let's watch this play out, see all these moving pieces, and just see how difficult this this offense is to defend in the red zone. So right here, we can see the motion. So as a result, the cornerback has taken a step over, and number 27 is going to chase Zacchaeus across the field. So what's that, what that's going to do is now, as we, as we get the snap here, just look at what Mariota has to work with. On that right side, uh, we're going to see blocks come down from the tight ends, and everyone else here is just going to play the run completely because they believe this is going to Caleb Huntley. Um, but as you guys know, it's not going to Caleb Huntley because Mario is going to pull this and we're going to see the corner come down here, basically take one false step while he's looking inside. And then it's off to the races for Mariota, who's just going to outrun that corner to the edge. So now that fake has happened. You can see basically the entire 49ers defense is playing the run. The cornerback even. Right here is when this play is over. He stops to look inside for a moment to make sure that it's not Huntley creeping out of there. And Mariota's already off to the races. Uh, and the corner will never recover. Uh, and and that's that's what you can do with, with a quarterback as athletic as Marcus Mariota. Uh, you can just hit the, the gas and have a one-on-one -on -one with the quarterback on the outside and just run that into the end zone. Um, it's just a wrinkle this offense hasn't had in a long time and, and credit to Arthur Smith for really exploiting what he's got here with a really good run game, some dangerous receivers and a very athletic quarterback who knows how to run the football very well. Uh, another touchdown and that this play puts the Falcons up 21 to 14. That's a lead. They will never surrender uh, throughout this game uh, and absolutely crucial take this lead into halftime because we could have been looking at a very different game if the Falcons don't get this touchdown um, and, are, and are only, you know, 
up slightly going into, into the half. I mean, we could be looking at a very different game. Uh, so props to the Falcons for a well-executed drive. Nice finishing play from Marcus Mariota. All right, here's another very lethal Marcus Mariota run, designed run play. Uh, this one's going to come up much later in the game. Third quarter, 10.53 remaining. Uh, second and six here. But again, the Falcons are just going to take advantage of the 49ers really going all in to stop the run. Uh, everyone's focused on Caleb Huntley on this play. And the second the 49ers make some key mistakes, which they will, uh, it's it's off to the races for Marcus Mariota. Um, and that's just the bind that an offense with a really talented running quarterback is going to put you in. Um, so what we're going to see is the defensive line basically crash down here to try to, to stuff up this run, but this edge rusher is going to be more or less unblocked, and he's just going to come flying in to try to disrupt Caleb Huntley. There will be a fake handoff, and he's going to actually escape and you know get through this, this tangle of guys, but as soon as this edge rusher overcommits to the inside, we're also going to see this linebacker take a couple steps inside before the snap, um, and that's just going to open these guys up to, to a huge run by Marcus Mariota, uh, with an assist, of course, first of all, from Jake Matthews, who, as soon as this linebacker gets too far to the inside, Matthews is just going to come in here and completely neutralize him. Drew Dahlman, the center here, he is going to come out and get enough of Frank Warner, uh, excuse me, Fred Warner to, to, open this play up for Marcus Mariota, and then it's just off to the races for Mariota, who's basically going to be untouched uh, for quite a while, picking up a 20-yard gain here. And it's just the 49ers committing to stopping Caleb Huntley here and getting out of position, the edge rusher losing his contain, the, the linebacker uh, moving inside, and that's a lethal mistake against a quarterback as fast as Marcus Mariota, as you will see here. And uh, you guys saw it, right? When you're unblocked, there's usually a reason you're being left unblocked. Um, so you see the edge rusher here. Jake Matthews just lets him go. And he's going to come out here and take out the linebacker who already moved to the inside. Um, but he just is... He, technically, he still has contain here, but he's just going to keep crashing to try to catch up to Caleb Huntley and not respect the threat of Marcus Mariota as a runner here. And as he does that, it's just going to be open season. I mean, and to be fair, this was a really well-executed fake. Like, I think the broadcast camera bit on this as well. Um, but Marcus Mariota has the ball here. You can see it. Um, and then, you know, that's it. Uh, just complete daylight here. Uh, for, for Marcus Mariota to run through. Um, and he's fast as hell. <laughs> he's going to make you pay for that mistake. And 20-yard uh, pickup there for the Falcons, uh, putting them in the red zone once again for what would be their final scoring drive to really put this game out of reach for the 49ers. Uh, just a really well-executed play that's taking advantage again of teams sort of trying to key on what the Falcons love to do, which is to run this ball. Um and using your quarterback very effectively in the run game. Um, and I think, like I said, Marcus Mariota, extremely talented as a runner. I think if this offense is, is going to fire on all cylinders and be very effective, especially against good defenses, they have to maximize Mariota as a runner. And that doesn't mean running him, you know, 20 times a game or anything like that. It does mean, however, being willing to, to let him go out there and run five to six times. And he did a great job of that in this game. Um, very effective against some really, really talented linebackers of the 49ers in this one. All right, folks, you didn't think we could get out of here without doing the Kyle Pitts touchdown catch, did you? Because we absolutely cannot. Um, there's not really a whole lot to this one. Um, it's, it's well drawn up by the Falcons here, taking advantage of the 49ers really not respecting Kyle Pitts on this play. Um, we're going to see Demir Bird motioned, uh, to the other side, uh, and that's going to bring the safety over. Um, and that's going to leave basically Kyle Pitts completely one-on-one -on -one with cornerback Samuel Womack, uh, who's like 5'10". So that's just a clear mismatch. Um, 
And we're going to see the Falcons actually throw it to Kyle Pitts in the end zone. He's going to make a great catch. Um, and there's just not a whole lot Womack can do on this route. And Kyle Pitts basically uh, pretty much catches this with, with little contest from the quarterback because... As before, pretty much the rest of this 49ers defense is, is occupied elsewhere. They're watching the running back. They're watching Mariota, who's been crushing them. They're even watching Zacchaeus and London more um, because everyone basically goes uh, to the right side on this one, and that's going to leave Kyle Pitts with a terrific opportunity. One-on-one -on -one here. And you can see just all this space for Pitts, and it's easy money. Good throw by Marcus Mariota. Great catch by Kyle Pitts. Um, you know, and you can see Bird, as soon as he vacates over here, the safety basically bails on this side of the field. And the 49ers are comfortable <laughs> apparently leaving the corner one-on-one -on -one with Kyle Pitts. And I think, you know, the Falcons need to make teams pay for doing that. Uh, and they do finally on this one. Um, like I said, this is all set up by everything else that's happened prior to that in this game you know the 49ers are very concerned about the threat of the run they're very concerned you know everyone sort of falls for the the eye candy over here with Demir Bird um you know and Marcus Mariota does a great job of sort of you know he's showing them that's his vision everyone's sort of creeping to the right and it's really this is probably designed to go to pitch the whole way he's got that one-on-one -on -one and it's easy money for that catch Kyle Pitts, to his credit, makes a great catch, and that's his first touchdown on American soil. Great job by the Falcons. Great job by Kyle Pitts getting that, and nice job delivering that by Marcus Mariota. All right, guys. Next play we're going to break down is actually a special teams play. It's a punt. We're going to break down a punt. I know that's what everyone's been clamoring for here on the Falcoholic Podcast. No, but this is an actual really impressive play uh, by Troy Anderson that I just felt like needed to be highlighted um just a tremendous job by Anderson preventing what probably would have been a uh, punt return touchdown if not for his ability to track this down um you know props to the 49ers returner I believe it's Ray Ray McLeod um who basically shrugs off a big hit from Kadero Hodge right when he catches the ball um you know avoids several more tackles gets past the punter but Troy Anderson might be the fastest man on this field. Um, and you're going to see it in this one. Um, so we'll break this down from the beginning. First of all, it's not a good punt. Um, it's only a 39-yarder. So that's part of it. This ball gets delivered probably a lot earlier than the, the Gunners were expecting. Um, but you can actually see the Gunners have a good shot at this. Um, right here, Hodge is going to get his blocker. His blocker is just going to you know basically get pushed over, fall down. And Hodge is going to have what looks like a free shot for a big hit here. And he does connect with McLeod, but McLeod escapes it. Like, he he just, I don't know how this isn't a big tackle. Looks like, I mean, Hodge does everything right here. You can see him make contact with the shoulder. Um, but McLeod just doesn't go down um, and avoids several other tackles, including one from Avery Williams that probably should have been a tackle as well. Um and then now he's he's through everyone, right? Um, and, you know, keep your eyes here on Troy Anderson, who doesn't make the tackle here. So now this is very bad, right? Now we've got the, the returner past the entire return team except for the punter um, with linebackers chasing him. And you would think, you know, okay, it's up to Bradley Pinion here. And Pinion, you know, makes an attempt or at least slows down the returner, um, but doesn't make the tackle. So... You know, in most scenarios right after this missed tackle by the punter, this is probably a return touchdown. But not when you have Troy Anderson on the field for you. Um, Troy Anderson is going to legitimately run down uh, Ray Ray McLeod and just done. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it's insane um, watching that closing speed from Anderson. I mean, he, he's way behind him at this point, and he's just too fast. He's faster than their returner. Uh, that's, you know, something that we talked about um, when he was drafted is like, look, even if this guy doesn't play defense, Trey Anderson's a special teams ace. Like, he's going to be tremendous on special teams, and he saves a touchdown on this play uh, with that tackle. Um, so, tremendous work there by Anderson. Obviously, the, you know, I think 
I don't think the Falcons played this terribly. I think McLeod just made a really good play somehow getting out of that hit from Hodge. Uh, don't know how he survived that one, but uh, great job by him. But thankfully, the Falcons had Troy Anderson here to shut this return down and keep it from being a punt return touchdown. So great job, Troy, on that play. All right, folks, first of two defensive plays we're going to break down to to close out the film review today. Uh, this is going to be the interception by Jalen Hawkins uh, that was set up by Darren Hall's pass breakup. Um, again, just a really, really nice play by Darren Hall, who just a couple plays before had a pass breakup on Brandon Ayuk that was major. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, Hall had to come in for, for A.J. Terrell, who we've heard has, was taken out mainly for precautionary reasons, which that's obviously something we're going to hope to have Terrell back. Uh, but Hall may have to step in now for uh, Casey Hayward, who we just heard has been put on IR. It seems like Hall's going to be the next man up there. And his play in this game really makes you confident that he can handle that role. Uh, very aggressive playing the ball in this one. Falcons look to be just running simple cover three here. Um, and at one point, it looks like Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be able to complete this pass to Debo Samuel, who appears to be open. But Hall's going to close lightning quick on that play and, and bop it up into the air for Jalen Hawkins to come down with, um, you know, possibly assisted a little bit by Rayshon Evans, who's going to be uh, blitzing on this one. Let's watch this play out. As you can see, Debo Samuel looks open, but Hall's right there to bop that into the air, and it's Jalen Hawkins in the right place at the right time to pick that ball off. So Garoppolo's wanting to go to, to Debo the whole time. You could see him staring him down right here, right? There's Debo Samuel. Um, and right now, you know, this looks like it's it's developing the way they want it, right? So Debo is going to kind of come over here and he's going to have this space because they believe that Hall is going to follow his man, you know, down this direction. But Hall is not going to bite on this. He's handing this off properly to Jalen Hawkins. Um and the pressure that's going to be coming from Rayshon Evans, too, is not going to let Garoppolo sit and think for too long about this. Um, so Garoppolo right now is is lining up to throw this ball. Uh, and right now, it looks like Debo's open, right? I mean, he looks pretty open to me. But Garoppolo's expected Darren Hall to sort of take the cheese on this route over here, but he's not. He's going to go back and break on this ball because he's reading... Garoppolo's eyes here seeing this ball is going to come to Debo Samuel which to be fair if I was having to make a call there I would make a call to cover Debo Samuel because he's the big threat in this passing game um, and just look at how quickly Darren Hall is able to close on this ball and, and bop it into the air and of course Jalen Hawkins right place right time is there to pick that off and end uh, a potential scoring drive and a potential you know comeback for the 49ers here um, because on the next drive, the 49ers would end up uh, turning the ball over on fourth down. We're going to look at uh, the end of that drive next. All right, folks. Final play we're going to take a look at. This is not the actual fourth down play, although that was impressive. I was actually more impressed with this third and one stuff by the Falcons defense that sets up that fourth down that the uh, 49ers will fail to convert which I think takes an almost 11 minute drive of theirs uh, and turns it into no points um and this is just a very impressive drive uh, a very impressive play here by the Falcons defense as a whole um it's actually going to be the cornerbacks that make this play on Tevin Coleman who's going to take the handoff on this one um and you know depending on what you think He's definitely following the play design. He's going to take this, you know, out wide. Uh, he's going to be following his right tackle, who's going to try to get a block on the corner, who's going to be D. Alford. Uh, and it's not going to work uh, because D. Alford plays it really well, and so does Mike Ford, who's out there defending the slot. Uh, and then Richie Grant and a whole host of other Falcons come in there to keep this from getting any further. But let's sort of break this down piece by piece here. So right here... It looks like he's going to get the first down for sure, right? I mean, look at this. You know, you don't you see that hole that size. That's that's pretty great. Uh, but it's not going to be that easy. The Falcons are going to sort of close that off quickly. 
you know, he's got to be able to turn up field here. So first of all, Mike Ford and Richie Grant are sort of taking away that this area. Uh, Mike Ford obviously coming over. And then we've got D. Alford on the outside that's going to prevent this here. Um, and this is where, you know, maybe you could quibble with <laughs> Coleman's decision-making. I mean, clearly the play is designed for the tackle to hit his block and Coleman to just ride this for a yard because he just needs a yard. I mean, if I'm Tevin Coleman, I think maybe I just take my chances with the the 5'10 corner uh, on the edge to just think I can carry him for a yard instead of running this back towards the defense. But he's following the play design, I imagine. So, um, you know, don't necessarily knock him for that. But what we're going to actually see is a pretty incredible play here by D. Alford. The right tackle's coming in to, to block him out. You know, you're expecting a quarterback to take on a right tackle. Not usually, but Alford's just going to duck this block attempt, get in here along with Mike Ford um, to make that contact on Tevin Coleman uh, and and really stop his momentum completely shy of the sticks uh, that you got Richie Grant coming in to clean it up. Um, so just an incredible play by D. Alford. Here. He just ducks the tackle completely. Uh, and the Falcons defense rallies to shut down that run. Um, and that's going to put the 49ers in that fourth and one that they do not convert. Um, but just a very unlikely sequence of events that you see a, a small undersized corner like D. Alford out there, first of all, in a third and one, you know, run stuff situation, potentially. Not only that, but he shakes the block from the tackle and gets the hit on the running back and, uh, with the other quarters to sort of shut down this run. Uh, just a really nice, impressive play by the defense. And this was an absolutely crucial stop uh, and basically ended all hope of the 49ers coming back in this one. So bravo to D. Alford, bravo to Mike Ford uh, and everyone else for rallying to make that tackle. Uh, just a really nice end to this drive for the Falcons defense. Well, folks, there you have it. Falcons film review for week six, beating the 49ers at their own game. Uh, the Falcons did a really good job of that. They they were the more creative offense today. They were the ones having success on play action. They were the ones dominating on the ground, and they were the ones shutting down the opposing offense. They only allowed 14 points in this game, and one of those touchdowns came off of uh, that Ray Ray McLeod return that I mentioned, obviously, Troy Anderson stopped that from being a return touchdown, but that set up the 49ers with very short field position. I think like the Falcons 30 yard line. Um, so they had an, you know, a very short field to score on there. Uh, but other than they had the one good drive and then the short field, and that was all they could muster. They mustered a lot of yards, not a lot of points. Uh, 49ers turned it over three times, uh, including a turnover on downs. And it was just a good team performance from the Falcons who let let's be honest took advantage of a an injured 49ers defense down Nick Bosa down two starting defensive tackles and um, they lost more players during this game but the Falcons took it to them uh, they showed they could run the ball on even the number one run to defense like e Javon Kinlaw and Ark Armstead have been missing for several weeks that's sort of the interior teeth of this 49ers defense they've been getting it done without those guys um allowing only three yards per carry on the season, including missing both of those guys for big chunks of that. And the Falcons go out there and, and put put 168 rushing yards on them. Uh, very impressive. Marcus Mariota had, I would say, his best game, especially considering the opponent. And the defense, also, good game. Um, allowed a ton of yards, but again, it doesn't matter if you allow a ton of yards if you don't allow the points. Uh, and in terms of scoring, the Falcons are 19th. And what I, what I said before the season is like, I think this defense needs to be closer to 20th than 32nd uh, if they want to be able to win games. And right now they are doing that. They are, they are finding ways to limit their opponents. It's not always pretty. Uh, it's not always glorious. It's not always clean <laughs> in terms of, uh, you know, just shutting people down or, or make, or getting pressure. I mean, they're getting pressure on the quarterback. They're not getting sacks, um, but they're able to get it done consistently. Uh, when it counts, especially late in games, this defense has been very good. So you have to like where they're at right now at three and three at this point in the season. I think many people had them at, you know, two and four, or maybe even one and five, depending on how pessimistic you were. Um, and they've, they've certainly beaten expectations. They got a tough matchup coming this week against the Bengals. Um, but the Bengals have struggled to stop the run. And you do wonder, uh, can teams that can't stop the run, what is their answer going to be for this Falcons offense? Because the Falcons playing their game and running the ball effectively 
that's translated into a lot of success for them, and it's really sort of thrown off a lot of opponents. So we'll have to see. This is a tough opponent coming up, especially on the offensive side of the ball, how the Falcons handle that. But uh, to be 3-3 three and three right now, very good, and I, I think they've shown that this is a, a dangerous rushing attack, one of the best in the NFL, if not the best. And uh, it's not slowing down, even without Cordero Patterson. Uh, this this offense has not slowed down a bit, um, and that's a scary thought for opposing defenses. Now even Kyle Pitts has catched a touchdown, so there's there's no respite uh, for opponents now. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's Falcons film review. Uh, do like and subscribe if you're watching this on the YouTube channel. We really appreciate that. If you're on the podcast, give us a five star review. Uh, Check us out on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Falcoholic Live. If you'd like to support the show, get access to uh, ad-free early episodes. And uh, yeah, uh, check us out on our socials as well. I'm Kevin Knight at Falcoholic. Kevin, you can check out the Falcoholic at the Falcoholic. Check out the site, falcoholic.com, for all that terrific written content. But guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll see you next time, Wednesday night at 8 p.m. for the next episode of the Falcoholic Live. Until then, guys, have a great day.